What is up, everybody? We are Jesse and Melissa of Adventure Endeavor. We have been traveling the U.S. of A. <laughs> U.S. of A. for almost two years now in our fifth wheel toy hauler. We stated a few videos ago that we were very excited for our new goal and our new adventure endeavor. For 2021. 2021 is going to be going small. This video is going to be all about the pros and the cons and we hope to get your guys's input on trailers just general advice in general because you know we general advice in general because we we have a mansion and we're gonna go pretty small yes Sh go ahead this is our second fifth wheel actually our first one was a keystone cougar and uh it was just a little bit too small for us. It was an awkward layout. It was an awkward layout for uh, when we first hit the road and um, it wasn't really suiting our needs so we upgraded to a Keystone Carbon toy hauler fifth wheel after eight months living in the first one. <laughs> we're really bad guys. But we like change. It, it improved our situation a lot and we're grateful and we still like this rig and we still might keep it but the whole point of the new smaller travel trailer yes you heard us right travel trailer is to get more off the grid to get way out on those really far backcountry camp spots mm -hmm. we're looking at something that is a true four season rig because we both love snowboarding and to be honest we kind of put it on the back burner because our carbon is just not suited to go camp in snow temperatures you know maybe we could get away with one night here or there yeah. we're talking maybe doing some snow seasons in our trailer we want to go to Baja and Alaska and we want to do it for long periods of time and be very comfortable and those are just a few things that we look to achieve with this new trailer mm -hmm. we have gotten very comfortable in RV life in general and uh, we just kind of want to change it up and keep ourselves on our toes because we've honestly gotten a little bit complacent with this large, super comfortable rig. Yeah, I mean, I think when you first jump from like a 2,000 square foot home to a 350 foot trailer, you know, those first couple of years, you're kind of like, wow, like, this is great. We have everything we need. But basically what we're saying, you know, bottom line is, is that we kind of miss camping. This doesn't feel like camping to us personally everyone is different and there's no judgment whatsoever we just want to i don't want to say rough it but we just want to go a little yeah. bit more minimal we're if, still gonna have all everything we need exactly if you guys know us if you've been following our channel for a while you know we like to get pretty rugged we do some pretty crazy stuff i mean it is called adventure endeavor after all <laughs> <laughs> and we used to be really into overlanding and you know we off-road our tow rig and all that crazy stuff so uh, we just want to do a little bit more of that but with a trailer with everything with a shower with a bathroom with a kitchen let's get into it and we're gonna kind of be doing a a rough pros and cons so the first subject is gonna be Going small in general is gonna help us out in a lot of ways. So what we found with our fifth wheel is that our overhead here, overhead clearance is extremely limiting. Just on National Forest Roads, you get a lot of trees. It's a huge thing. We were trying to stay at a buddy's house the other day. We were trying to do some mooch docking and he had a bunch of, like a tunnel of trees and we couldn't stay at his house. I mean, we got lucky, we had a different situation, but it's limiting, we found that. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that the smaller rig will help with spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Because lots of times we'll be like, oh look, potato museum. And we'll be like, ah, like last minute, like, you know, we can go down and, and check, but you know, there's there's bridges, there's, you know, narrow streets, trees again. Mm -hmm. It's just a little hindering in a sense. We feel that it'll be a lot more, oh, we can go into any gas station. We would just a little less thinking and a little less decision fatigue exactly um, not having to worry so much about overhead clearance would be huge for us I mean we are what 13 6 right now yes. and that's great it gives us tons of headroom tons of space it's really nice when we get somewhere and we're set up but it's just very limiting as far as where we can go and uh, how quickly we can get there yeah and the same thing with length length is I found that has not been as much of an issue especially with a fifth wheel because you're able to maneuver them quite nicely but 
it's still, it's 38 foot from front to back. We're trying to be like 21 overall complete with the new trailer. So obviously we understand that the con of that is gonna be a smaller living space, but we also have a lot of junk that we're gonna try to get rid of, so. Yeah, you know, you always, it's like a <laughs> like a fish, right? Or a shark, like you grow, yes. you grow to the size of your enclosure. I don't know if that's the right analogy, but you guys know what I'm saying. You just, um, yeah, you, you grow. Your stuff expands to, to fit what the you size live in. of the space. So, it's that easy. You know, get a smaller space and your stuff just disappears. Yeah, and like we said, we feel like we're really well adjusted to this lifestyle. So we think that now is a good time to try going small and see how it goes. We think. We think. Another uh, big thing we look forward to with the smaller rig is just easy access. That's kind of what we talked about just before. But I'm talking, we want to have some more ground clearance. We want to have you know, maybe the underbelly protected to some extent of this rig to where, you know, we can go down those dirt roads and not worry about dragging the jacks, not worry about puncturing certain things. Um, we plan on putting better tires on this rig, maybe some off-road tires. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of times when we would be like, oh, we don't want to go down that dirt road tonight, so let's just camp, leave it hooked up, keep our slides in, and not go down that dirt road and we'll do it in the morning mm -hmm. which it's not a huge deal but at times it's inconvenient if you have to work the next day or something like that same thing with walmart's it's just easier to find spots same things with mooch docking we have a lot of friends around the country but you know a lot of times a 38 foot just does not fit you can't make a turn there's trees whatever we want to do more of that you know, basically what a smaller rig is for. It basically creates a lot more flexibility in mm -hmm. our options. Yes. Mm -hmm. This guy. This guy right here. Me? This one. You. So I have these, these plans, um, you know, in my head going around. And some of these plans are to make this trailer very capable. So more than likely, we're going to start with a off-road hitch which allows it 360 degrees of articulation, whether you're going vertically or side to side, so the trailer can flex and you won't damage the frame. That's gonna be huge. We are gonna be upgrading leaf springs, if it has leaf springs, and potentially adding some larger off-road shocks so all of our stuff doesn't get rattled to death. We plan on adding skid plates and rock sliders. Mm -hmm. And a few other things, and obviously we're going to be keeping weight in mind, and that's where it's going to get tricky, because we're going to be full-timing, and we're going to be adding some heavy items to protect the trailer. But like I said, we want to build kind of a go-anywhere trailer, and we want to just be able to kind of close our eyes and just drive everywhere and just not worry about it. Not really, I'm just kidding, but that'd be cool. <laughs> So another potential downside of going into a smaller rig is with smaller rigs, you're almost always going to have lower tank capacity. It's lower fresh, um, a smaller black tank, smaller gray tank. Um, some potential ways that we could remedy that are by getting a composting toilet and um, then we could convert both of our, both our gray tank and our black tank into gray tanks. Which, yes, we'll, we'll convert the black into gray. Oh, yeah. One gray is already gray, so. Yeah, yeah, what he said. But yes, that's, what he said. that's, uh, <laughs> that's something that's, that's a very good idea because then you double your gray and also with the composting, obviously, you don't need to go to the dump station, which is very convenient. Right, and we could get an auxiliary water bladder. You know, we've talked about potentially mounting it in the bed of the truck or getting mm -hmm. one of those roll-up collapsible ones. Yep, so we um, can always bring water into where we are if we don't want to move the trailer. Mm -hmm. Or go, you know, bring extra in when we're driving in initially. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if we run out, go out and get some and yep. come back to the camp spot and don't have to leave the trailer wherever we left it. Exactly. So the next thing that we have put a lot of thought into is if we should get a slide in this camper or not. Most of them come with one slide because obviously you get a lot more space, but my concern is that I want to put this trailer through the paces and really use it, and I'm very concerned about the box of the trailer articulating and having a slide in the side, you know, either side could potentially twist it and cause a lot of issues. Yeah. So we're kind of leaning towards maybe getting a slightly longer trailer but then skipping a slide, which is also nice for certain reasons and also bad for certain reasons. So obviously we'll have less space. It'll feel more like a tunnel. 
that's that's the negative. But the crows are, it'll probably hold up better off road. Mm -hmm. And then if we're mooch docking, you know, we know that we are the width that we are. You know, you don't have to worry about, oh, there's a tree over here putting a slide out. If we're getting to these tighter, more remote spots. The same with mooch docking, the same with Walmart. Mm -hmm. And then my main concern is that the slide system itself, whether it's cable or or rail or sh was it Schwin Schwintech, you know, the worm gear. I'm worried about that getting bounced and jarred around off-road. So that's a potential issue. Let us know your thoughts on slide versus no slide. Um, we're curious to hear. Yeah, the more moving parts that you have, the more likely you have something break. So uh, it's definitely a concern of ours with how rugged we want to get and off-road that we want to go with this type of trailer. But like Jesse said, the downside would be smaller living quarters and smaller floor space so you know you you guys have seen our dog blue he's 80 pounds and when he lays on the floor he takes up you know an entire Very aisle true. way Very true. so you know that's a concern but we'll, we'll figure it we'll, out we'll figure it out there's got to be a unicorn trailer out there somewhere <laughs> some of the brands that we are looking at um, to purchase are outdoors rv arctic fox nash lance and escape fiberglass trailers and the reason that we're looking at these five particular trailers is they have a really high build quality and they're four season capable so those are things that we're looking for so that's why we're looking at those mm -hmm. do, yeah. do you guys have any other suggestions of manufacturers that might be up our alley yeah if there's anything we haven't heard of please right here put it down it, there throw it our way we're open to suggestions but basically that's going to kind of round out this video so we're just trying to let you guys know what our goals are so you know this year what is going on and then obviously when we do finally get a new trailer there will be a bunch of mods to come slowly obviously we're not millionaires or anything like that we'll do them when we can mm -hmm. and we're excited to have input from you guys and let us know what you think about our whole idea and our whole concept and Hopefully uh, it'll just be fun for everyone. Yeah, and just to reiterate, we don't plan on selling our Keystone Carbon quite yet. We actually don't know exactly when we're going to buy a small trailer. Uh, hopefully sometime within the next few months, if you know all goes according to plan. Um, but we are going to store this rig for you know an unforeseen amount of time and just try out going small and see how it goes. Yeah, the plan is to get into the new trailer you know and hopefully we like it like we believe we will and then if we are in it for six months and then we go you know what we don't want the carbon then we'll we'll list it for sale and go from there mm -hmm. but if we decide that we hate a small travel trailer then well we have the option to move back into here yep and like always guys we appreciate you watching and we will catch you on the next one